I am absolutely thrilled to be here in Gloucestershire on the edge of the Cotswolds at Barclay Castle. This castle has been lived in by the same family for nearly 900 years. I mean, just looking at it right now, I can see the arrow slits, I can see the keep. I mean, this is a proper castle. It's a fortress. It's incredible. But I also know that a king was imprisoned here and murdered as well. So I'm gonna go meet the family right now. Ooh, and they're gonna tell me everything. Hello and welcome to the drawing room here at Mapperton. Thank you once again for joining me for another fascinating historic house visit. This time, I'm at Barclay Castle in Gloucestershire, and Barclay Castle has been described as an enchanted castle and is everything you imagine a medieval castle to be. It is spectacular. Wow, incredible. It's like walking back in time. It's a real fortress. I mean, this has this feeling of sort of defending itself from invaders and clearly imprisoning a king. As well as being at the center of so much history, it's been home to the Barclay family for nearly 900 years. Charles Barclay is now at the helm and continuing the legacy of generations of Barclays before him. Hello. Hi, Judy. Oh my goodness. So nice to see you and Good to see Gosh, you. to be here. You know, the pictures don't do it justice. It's magical as you come in and approach through this door into the Great Hall. Oh, oh my goodness. The banqueting hall. It is. It's, for me, it's astounding, first of all, just to know that your family has been here for nearly 900 years. That's right. I believe it's the oldest inhabited castle in Great Britain, lived in by the same family that built it originally. We're still here. <laughs> in some form and um, it's wonderful it's got a lot of history history all around it yeah i mean absolutely incredible and as you said it's you know that is rare you know you you know you go to these homes and you know some of them have been there for three four hundred five hundred years mm. yes but 900 years and you are obviously the only family who can make that claim and i think i'm the 27th generation <laughs> being here um from 1150 basically 1150 so we're, you know, it's, it's nearly, you know, a, we can say a thousand years of history. Yes. Nearly. We're coming up to that. So this is the banqueting hall. I mean, it's absolutely spectacular. And what has stayed the same and what has sort of changed or evolved? Well, these were the original Norman arches. So those were the original arches here when the castle, this room was being constructed. Right. Um, and the roof has adapted. Yes. This was rebuilt in the 15th century. These amazing ship's timbers, Incredible. this vaulted roof. You imagine the work that goes in, into constructing that. Yes. Remind us, the banqueting hall was, this was, again, like a great hall. Everything sort of happened here, is that right? Everything happened here from en entertaining royalty, families would have had dinners here. Um, they would have had banquets to celebrate various events. They would have had galleries like this. Yes. And musicians would have played and performed. And it's been used right up to the present day. There are weddings and parties here still. In I the mean, hall. that's what's so fantastic, and as it should do, and, and as it should be used. Now, you mentioned here, this is the minstrel gallery here. Is that right? This is the, the minstrel's gallery. gallery. And is that the original minstrel's gallery? This is one that came from a house in Wales called Kefin Mabley, and there would have been a gallery here, but it was stripped away. This one was brought in and they added Barclay coats of arms on it, repainted it. Um, and right. there's a famous story of the last royal jester in the country told his last joke from up there. He was pushed apparently from that balcony and died in, in uh, 1720s, but he was the last royal jester in the country. <gasps> Oh died, my goodness. Uh, died. Supposedly from this balcony. Oh dear. For telling bad jokes. <laughs> he was pushed, so, pushed to his death. Pushed and he was he was the Earl of Suffolk's own jester. Right. And died in this room. But he was a celebrated character of his time. 
And it's quite common. I mean, I know this just at Mapperton as well. Some of our fireplaces, mm. the mantles were brought from other stately homes, historic homes. You would find them and then you would bring them into your own home as well to yeah. sort of keep with the, the look and feel and be sympathetic to what you're doing. Is, it, is, the, is that what's happened here? There was once a minstrels gallery. It had been removed and then it was brought back in. Absolutely. Brought back in, redecorated um, in sympathy with um, how the building would have, would have been. Um, and actually talking about fireplace, this one was brought from another property an old Elizabethan property on the estate and by the 8th Earl and established here. So tell me a little bit about the 8th Earl then, because you've mentioned him here and he was mm. somebody who decided to, right, I'm going to be sympathetic, I'm going to bring it back to its original sort of look and feel. He did. He decided that during the Victorian times, a lot of the rooms had changed um, in their style. They'd been wood panelled and he stripped that away he wanted to replace some of the earlier windows with very symbolic, you know, um, oh stained glass goodness. windows showing lots of the family and royal links to the castle. So he had these shields uh, put on in the 1930s, I right. believe. Right. Um, he put in new doors. He put electrics in the castle. He brought in um, a, a lot of stonework and, and, and doors from, from other places, traveled through France and Italy and salvaged a lot of things right. to turn the castle back into what he felt it would have been originally. Yes. A medieval, a Norman castle, which a Norman is what castle. it was. Exactly. But it had been changed slightly over the years. Where is your coat of arms? Just so, so I get it right. Julie, here, that shield there, the chevron, the upside yes. down B with those crosses, that is our basic, the shield, the, the Barclay shield. Okay. Um, and that goes back to, to 1300. So. For example, that the Barclay there, uh, William, the 12th Baron um, of Barclay, he actually left the castle to Henry VII and his heirs. Oh. He wanted to become a Marquis and he had the castle taken away from him um, for his actions that the king didn't approve some of the things he'd done. And it became a royal castle for 150 years. But that is, that is the, the that family is, that main is, shield. Right. And you can see it again. I can up see there up with there. the bishop's mitre atop. Yes. Um, and then some royal coats of arms of some of the royals who came, another family oh coats of arms Oh my goodness. Here. Well, I'm just having a look. So Sir Henry Charles. VIII. Yes. There. Oh. And his dates, Henry <gasps> the Seventh. Yes, up above we've got King Edward the Sixth. Sixth. That's it. Um, so how many monarchs would you say have sort of visited or stayed or lived? We reckon <laughs> about 10 have actually been and right. maybe come for a very short time, uh, including Henry VIII, who came for a week. Right, he came for a week. One That's week. quite a long time. It is a long time. <laughs> and Edward uh, and Richard II, who wrote about, it was written about, uh, he came and visited in Shakespeare um, and he mentions Barclay. So yes, there were some who came briefly and there were some who sadly didn't survive Edward II was it was actually yes right i'll tell there's more of a story about okay. him um so yes we reckon about 10 10. 10. i mean absolutely and who is the last one to visit and um king charles has visited here and um, brilliant prince harry came and did some work experience here for a couple of weeks on the right. estate so Fantastic. recent so visitors you've recent you've had recent royalty uh, recent, recent royalty, royalty. That is brilliant. This banqueting hall, we know how it was used, of course, um, way back when, but do you still use this hall as a family? We do. We have weddings, uh, parties in here, and uh, we've used it over the last five years um, for, for many family parties, and it comes alive. It's a fantastic room. It's got the history around it. Why not, as a family, uh, use these rooms when you can? Yeah, well, that's, and they should be used. And yes. That, that's what's so wonderful, and I think that's... What also is fantastic is that these historic houses in Barclay Castle, uh, you know, in particular, what you've just shared with me is that they're lived in by the families. These aren't just, you know, museums filled with history. It's the family making use of the rooms and creating their own history. It really is. And I think that's so important. And uh, you get a sense of pride when the rooms are being used for a lovely occasion and they're decorated and, the, yeah. you know, the sound of people enjoying themselves. Yes, I think exactly, it's great. exactly, exactly. 
Wow, so this is one spectacular room and there are a lot of rooms here, aren't there? There are. <laughs> Let's go and have a look at another room. Okay, okay, great. Mapperton and many of the houses that I film at, like this one here, Barclay Castle, are part of the Historic Houses, which is the association that owners of these beautiful and old houses and gardens all join to help us figure out how to look after these wonderful places. We need their advice and help on everything from restoration to running a business to renewable energy. But we need your help and support in order to secure grants and understandings that help save some really fragile places from going under and being sold. And this was particularly poignant during the pandemic and it's still making a difference now. When you become a Historic House member, you get behind the scenes look at what it takes to care for somewhere like Mapperton and Barclay Castle. The quarterly magazine sent straight to your door and available online is packed with great features, lots of history, art and architecture, but fun stuff and insights into a typical day in the life of an owner too. And if you're coming to Britain, the best part is that you can use your card to visit many of the places that appear on the American Viscountess channel absolutely free. It's the essential pass you need for any summer holiday on this side of the pond and pretty much the only one that covers the whole of the UK, including Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, as well as England. I've set up a special code just for you to receive a discount on your Historic Houses yearly membership. Details down below. Where are we heading into now? Well, Julie, we're going into the um, long drawing room, the sort of Regency period, lovely rooms. Lovely, and I can see the public gets to, I recognize ropes like this, we have them at Mapperton as well. <laughs> they so this do. is one of the rooms that the public gets to Absolutely, see. they get to see, view this, this room and it's uh, wonderful. There's a lot of, lot of history here. Lo well, yeah, everywhere. I mean, this is a royal castle. So yes. there's lots yes. of history, yes. um, of course. Now, that has caught my eye because it almost looks like it's out of place for a long drawing room. I mean, not that I know that much about long drawing rooms, but... <laughs> it's, yes, it's very, mm. you wouldn't normally expect that, would you walk in here? You, but it's, it's 15th century, so it goes back to Henry VII's time with his coat of arms. Oh. And in the middle there. Yes. And... But what is it? It is a pew that would have been used in a church, in a chapel. A lot of these houses had the family pew or when they had visiting dignitaries, they would have sat up there. And um, this was in one of the chapels in the castle, a room uh, not far from here. And the eighth Earl took it down in the 1920s because he was agnostic, didn't want to have a chapel in the house and had it rebuilt in here, as, as yeah. you do. As you do in a long drawing room. But it, he somehow made it work. He did, and, and yes, as, as you, you, you wouldn't think it would work in a period room like this, but he had a very good eye and it does sort of work and you get used to the, the lovely woodwork and, and yes. um, how it is. And it's, uh, um, and in fact, it's got the nice coat of arms yes. on. Yes, well, but that is yeah. absolutely spectacular. And where, what else do we have dotted around? We've got lovely paintings. Um, this painting here is of the fifth Earl of Berkeley, quite a character in his time painted by an artist called Bertoni. That's him in, in uh, I think, in ancient Rome on his European travels. Ah. And this is his, eventually, she, his wife, Mary Cole, a local lady who eventually he married and they had 12 children, oh my I believe, uh, together. And there was a famous story because after he had died in 1812, she had to go to the House of Lords and fight this court case for her children. For because, all 12? Well, the elder son, who was meant to inherit the title, it was turned down against him because he'd signed, they didn't actually get married, the church registry, he'd, he'd um, falsified the documents to say they got married in 1786. He was in league with the um, vicar, local vicar, and right. actually their real marriage took place 10 years later. So the older five children were born outside of the marriage, and she fought for this case, went to the House of Lords for the privileges case we've got documents about it 
and lost the case. No. So it caused some ill feeling. <gasps> the sixth yes. son, in the end, got the castle, but loved his brother and uh, didn't take the title uh, on. And the, the brother was actually, he let him, uh, he got another title, the older one, who should have had the title. And, but it did cause some animosity. Uh, she never knew this. She thought they got married in Berkeley Church and it was all done legally. Right, yes. But actually it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a proper ceremony. He rushed it through knowing it wasn't. Um, and they only got married, as I said, years later. But she fought three occasions. She went to the House of Lords to, to fight this. Well, what a beautiful room and just filled with incredible stories from you know different periods and absolutely. that's absolutely yeah it's this these castles. 300 years of history yeah. with the pew and the, the paintings yeah. up to the modern day up to the modern day absolutely brilliant 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 okay should we walk through into here yes look at those carvings up there oh my okay the thing that Draw, I'm just going to tell you right now, Charles, not knowing anything about this room, yes. I know nothing about this room, are the, the beams. But should I be in awe of the beams? You should. Okay. <laughs> well noticed, Julie. <laughs> because these are all solid ships, again, oak timbers. Um, and they say that they used to get the cannons on top of the roof. You had to have these strong. And these are all solid beams. Um, there's quite a naval connection with the family but these are all from ships. You can see some different sizes. Yes. You see it very much in this room though, the you, size of the beams. You do, that's incredible. I mean, and the room's the, slightly lower as well. Yes, it's the first thing that caught my eye. I mean, it's a beautiful room. There's incredible tapestries surrounding me, but yes. funny enough, that's the first thing that caught Solid, my eye. Solid, good, yeah. big oak beams. This was all wood paneling around here. It was stripped away by the eighth earl. Mm. Uh, so to reveal to, some of the stonework, which yes. has been redone and okay. then the tapestries to keep it warm yep. so the tapestries are actually being used in a way absolutely that i think really were, well yeah, yeah there's really, a series really well. of lovely tapestries that warm lovely yeah, make the room cozy tapestry fireplace okay. that came from somewhere elsewhere right. again I know with that these story. lovely carvings yeah beautiful and this carvings lovely everywhere. iron grate at the back oh um it's absolutely fantastic beautiful carvings. and there's a king right there so is that, that Charles is, the first or the second? I think that's the second. It's the second, yes. And that's the Duke of Northumberland. Okay. Again, rather lovely, two lovely paintings. No yes. connection to the family, but it was acquired. That's by all the right. Family. It's a connection to our family. So that's Charles why. II, that's yes. why I always spot Charles the second in any room or anywhere. Right. I go. <laughs> You'd have to look for it. It's yeah. our claim to fame. Our, it's our really only royal link. I mean, proper royal link is, of course bringing Charles II back for the restoration. Fantastic. That's, you know, that's gonna, a great story. I'm going to wave that flag <laughs> for a long time. That's the a, reason we have the monarchy today is because of the Montagues. <laughs> he's one of my favorite kings too. <laughs> well, that is brilliant. <laughs> oh, I love it that you have family photos in the rooms that the public obviously go through and see the history, but then they're seeing the living history here. Absolutely. This is the current family. Oh. This is our family, um, my father and my mother, uh, my brother and his wife, my wife. And, you know, the family are seen here at the castle. We have family events. The family are often seen rushing around uh, through these courtyards into the rooms. We come to see Granny um, here at the castle. My daughter and friends, they disappear up into some of the rooms and... Um, Incredible. But do you, you grew up here then? Yes. We grew up. In, in the castle? We spent the winter months here at right. Barclay because there was a lot more going on in the winter here. Um, and my brother and I, 11 months between us, there were two of us, two boys in the castle. We had our rooms up in the oldest part of the castle and we would run around these rooms, hiding in the pew, hiding up on the king's balcony. The guided tours were on, we'd suddenly jump out. <laughs> We'd be up on the roof um, as soldiers. My brother, um, we both had a love of, of uh, all things military. And yeah, we'd, we'd explore every little part. My father would often come and look for us. My mother had a bell she would ring to get us in for lunch. She'd ring it in the courtyard uh, and all the guides and visitors would be looking and there'd be two boys up on the roof. <laughs> so we loved oh. being here. And we had rooms, as I said, in the keep away from my parents but it was exciting. 
Um, oh. It was a privilege, as my father yes. said. Your, yes, yes. The, the privilege of being in these rooms, of these houses. And yeah, I loved and I grew to love history from a young age and visiting other places. But being able to yeah. explore these rooms was right. magical. Of we were course. very lucky. And of, yeah, yeah, but yeah. It grows on you. you this is your surroundings and it's, it was, yeah, it was, it was magical. And I think my brother would say the same. Barclay Castle played a major role in a gruesome and chilling event of British medieval history. Charles led me to the keep, the oldest surviving part of the castle, to tell me more. Everywhere you go, Charles, I've already decided I, I do feel I'm in just a proper castle. It's really maintained and retained all of its features. It certainly has. And you've got these incredible uh, trip steps, the original steps coming up into the oldest part of the castle, the keep. Well, what and are trip steps? They're um, made so they're slightly uneven on different yeah. angles, even. Um, very solid stones and they would the enemy coming up here would trip them up it well literally... i was wondering why i was having a difficult time actually i noticed just now <laughs> like, well that's very clever it is it's a great invention and, and a piece of feet of building and it's um yeah coming up to this solid wonderful old keep the original tower of the castle where the family and others would have lived it was a safe place right and uh, the enemy would often come up here and you'd have your arrow men and guards up on top um, yes. or you pour your boiling oil down <gasps> there's a little area just below behind the door there yes. and uh, get the enemy as they were rushing up these steps as they were rushing up but they could be tripping or they could as be <laughs> tripping as well <laughs> because of the uneven steps yes brilliant that's amazing okay we're going to go into the cell now the prison cell where and a king was kept. Oh my goodness, so this is it. This is the original cell, um, which back in 1327, Edward II was imprisoned and, and killed. And, ki and killed. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Walking into that room was really unnerving. This is where a king was locked up, <laughs> basically. <laughs> it was, Julia. King Edward II was imprisoned in here, locked up uh, for six months. He was kept as a prisoner, looked after well, but nonetheless, he was king of England and there were guards outside. Right. And the Barclays apparently left the castle, went somewhere else, had no part to play in it. What had he done? He hadn't really done anything. He was considered at the time uh, quite a weak king. He'd lost battles against the Scots. He had his favorites. The barons became very powerful. Supposedly his wife, who was the daughter of the King of France, was having an affair with one of the barons, Roger Mortimer. Edward was, yeah, he was, and they, they plotted. There were various things. He, he had his fav male favorites, supposedly. And all these plots came together and right. he was imprisoned in two other castles before eventually coming here and uh, eventually being killed. Or here? Dying in this very room. No. Which <gasps> is amazing to, no. to know that okay. a king was killed. When you say that he died here, but did he die because he wasn't fed or was there, did somebody come and murder him? Supposedly two jailers came, were ordered uh, by the barons at the time to come and he'd already escaped twice. There'd been two escape attempts. Right. They needed money for new locks. We have accounts of that to keep him as a prisoner. And they realized actually we've got to do something about him. If he escapes again, we may not keep him here. It was a punishment uh, to him. And he was supposedly yeah. killed. There's a story, a rather nasty story of uh, red hot irons being inserted into his bowels. No. Being killed or was he suffocated in his sleep? Um, right. Rather nasty story, grim story, but he certainly died in September 1327 here. Here.
was Edward II the only person, I mean, I know he was the only king hmm. to be imprisoned here, but was he the only person to be imprisoned here? No. Was this used there, as sort of... I believe there would have been other prisoners um, who would have been put in here before Edward II and again after, probably another hundred years after, this would right. have been used as a, a cell. As a and cell. And people would have been kept in here before some of them would have been thrown into the, there is a dungeon here in the castle, a pit with rotting animal carcasses on top. In fact, Edward, they tried to kill him in that way. The rotting animal carcasses in the, in the dungeon, they thought the fumes from that would eventually kill him. But he survived, he was made of strong stuff. And the fumes, you can imagine, would have come, come through into this room from the dungeon. But he survived all that and they had to find another way. And they, found they thought eventually he'll just die from the horrible fumes. But many prisoners would have been thrown in the dungeons. And and that that was, would have been it. That would have been but it. this is, was a, a cell yes. back, back in the time, yes, a holding you, cell. You did say that your ancestors had nothing to do with his imprisonment, but what happened to them? When Edward II was here, imprisoned, where did your ancestors go? They Well, we think Thomas um, wanted no part to play in it, had no, I don't think he had any say in the fact that Barclay was, uh, that, that Edward II was going to come here. He would have known though, but he went to one of the other manor houses in Bristol and he was pardoned. Uh, he was at first questioned and then pardoned that he had no part to play in it. They left it to these, a group, there were three or four jailers and people living here guarding yes. the king at the time and they went to their, their other house, then came back later. And then came back. But he wasn't um, executed or he was, luckily right, right, he was kept pardoned. his head. Yeah, luckily. They were good at keeping their heads, yeah. the Barclays. <laughs> Yes, for 900 years. For 900 years. <laughs> keeping on the right side of the king or queen, which was important. Exactly, um, at the time. It's I don't know if it's a good thing that we connected to that, story. but it's, it's, a, it's a story and it, it's, it's well, history, isn't it? It is history you, and it's just you're standing in this room right now knowing that, you know, hmm. Edward II was definitely pacing back and forth, trying to figure out how he was going to escape. And, yeah. um, and, and you know, that's... Pretty I can't imagine being in a cell, in a car, you know, and, and knowing he'd been kept prisoner. Right. I can't, you can't imagine how it would have been. Yeah, it, it's, it's just wonderful just to, that you have, I mean, honestly, I've been to a lot of historic houses and Barclay Castle just, you have everything here at this castle <laughs> and, and it still exists and the history is just extraordinary. The castle is still here and there's a family here. That's what makes it it's yes. quite special in that way. You know, we've got rooms like this, which, yes. yeah, yeah. Which, which tell a story. Tell a story. Yeah. The story of Barclay Castle is amazing. The castle and the family have been at the heart of so much British history. To stand in the room where a king was imprisoned and then murdered 700 years ago is astonishing. You'll be able to see much more of my visit to Barclay Castle in episodes coming soon. I'll be delving into the archives for some more royal intrigue. Because in yes. one sense, this is a document saying that the soon to be Henry II is in one sense giving this land yes. to the family. And meeting Charles's mother, Mrs. Barclay, in her private apartments at the castle. To me, it's just home. Yes. You know, uh, and it feels yeah. this room and even walking around in different parts that I've been it feels it lived in lived in. doesn't it yes yes so be sure to subscribe like and comment below I look forward to seeing you all back here very soon bye everybody I am so lucky to be able to film at historic houses all across the UK thanks to the support of our amazing American Viscountess patrons Please do consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash American Viscountess. Here you'll get early access to all of the episodes and they're ad free as well. Plus you'll receive American Viscountess merchandise and connect with like-minded people who also love castles, manors, and stately homes as much as I do. Details down below.